I'm in my second <laughs> meeting and I'm still trying to figure out, you know, who's the players in this thing and what's everybody's role and, you know, really trying to figure things out. Next thing I know, I hear Eric go, David, that'd be perfect for you to volunteer for. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, you're listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, where HIPAA and humor collide to make learning fun. Your delightful hosts are Donna Grindle and David Sims. Relax, HIPAA help is on the way. This is Mikkel with the Charles Redna Institute in Memphis, Tennessee, and you're listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast. Welcome to episode 284 of the Help Me With HIPAA podcast. My name is David Sims of HIPAA for MSPs and Security First IT, and joining me, as always, Donna Grendel from CardenHQ.com. <laughs> In case you don't know where to find it. <laughs> you can't just Google Carden. <laughs> well, yeah, if you, you, you know, those people that make speakers. Yeah. <laughs> all that kind of stuff. Too Donna's like, cards. we don't sell speakers, but we are speakers. Hey, oh, but don't bump. <laughs> There's a good one. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so how's things going in your neck of the woods? Right now? <laughs> right this minute? I know the answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> things Look, are kind of crazy. I'm just trying to close out, get my work done, keep my head down, stay under the radar. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like with 2020, we're trying to just like slide into home base. <laughs> so, just, <laughs> I just need to get there. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Just, uh, it's more like doing a limbo that keeps getting lower and lower. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So I'm already on my yeah. back. Just put me on a, a roller, yeah. push me through. Yeah. That's, that, that's where we're, we're at. But I mean, we've got all these, uh, you know, it's assessment season for us. So mm-hmm. yeah, everybody's asking me when I'm going to get stuff done. You know, that just creates a tish of stress from time to list. time. It's on my Most list. of the time I just ignore it. If you're like me, it's like, it's on my list. I just can't find the list. <laughs> I don't know which list I put it on. Speaking of list, it's been on our list to have Eric join us again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we've managed to work it out and not screw it up. I know. How about that? <laughs> yep. So today, we're going to be doing an interview with Eric Decker, and uh, we're talking about Hiccup. Uh-huh. I remember when and his first- And some other things. Yeah, always other things. Yeah. <laughs> but I remember when this first came out and you and I were arguing about, should we call it Hiccup or should we call it Hick P? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we decided on Hiccup before we heard that it was Hiccup. So yeah, we, you're, yeah, I'm, so, I'm sure you're taking credit for that. I mean, I say it all the time, but this is just more evidence. <laughs> you know, powers that be, listen. <laughs> that or we're just as smart as the other guy. So, that being said, mm-hmm. we got an opportunity to talk about some of the stuff we've just done episodes on, like, you know, all of the ransomware attacks in uh, uh, healthcare and uh, information blocking and, you know, a wide variety of things. And it was a great conversation because we're doing this after. Uh, so, as not to create any kind of, you know, we're not like they do on TV where they tell everybody to pretend it's like, the day before Christmas, and then they film stuff in July. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get a little sh- the little snow shakers out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they filmed a Christmas movie, you know, because Atlanta. There's all this filming stuff that happens now, and on the other side of the main road up here, they filmed a Christmas movie. It was one of the last movies Robin Williams did, but I think it's Happy Freaking Christmas. Mm-hmm. But they were filming it like. We were all, you know, people were getting their lawn chairs and sitting out and watching them film it at night. Wow. Yeah. So that, you know, we do get to witness the beauty of cinematography. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's fake. Everybody's wondering, anyway. like, why is everybody sweating on the set? <laughs> it's the middle of December. These, <laughs> they have all the fans. They got all this stuff. It's crazy. Yeah, I'm sure. So, uh, but in other news, we do have the HIPAA boot camp coming up, virtual edition, first one of 2021 mm-hmm. already, already in the books. Uh, well, it's not, you know, we're, it's an, it's, we're doing it. We're doing it. And people are signing up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, they are. Uh, yeah. So, so get out there, 
get your info, get it in your budget, and uh, it's at thehippabootcamp.com. There you go. Yeah. So uh, February 23, 24, 25, that's, that will be here before you know it. Like, <laughs> that is not far away. I know. And think of all we got to do between now and then. I know. So, uh, well, just think about where we were in 2019 at this point. And then February, we were starting to hear about this thing. Mm hmm. Uh huh. And, uh, boy, we were so, so naive at that time. <laughs> We were so not looking prepared. forward to 2020. Yeah. So join us in 2021. 2021. Yep. Be the virtual edition. And um, we, and we've talked more about that in past episodes. So you can go check those out. And by the way, if you don't know, we are on YouTube. Yes. So if you want to see our pretty smiling faces as we record and all the crazy looks that Donna gives me when I say stupid stuff. <laughs> like that. <laughs> I did notice the other day I said like the... I mean, at the very beginning of the video, I said the the title of the episode, and Donna's got like head goes sideways, and I'm like, "What? What? The, what just happened?" <laughs> <laughs> well, you've started saying the episode numbers, and you didn't normally do that, so <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, anyway, I'm like she, a puppy. What? Yeah. What, what just happened here? Like, that's not one of my words. He he changed that's the format it. and didn't tell me. <laughs> All right, so check out info on the Hippa Boot Camp and go check us out on YouTube. You can find us on there, or I think we have a link from the website. If not, David should make one. I should make one. What do you think it should be? What, um, help me with hippa.com slash YouTube? That, that sound good? Might work. All right, cool. There you go. How do you spell it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get to the interview with Eric. It was great as always. Yeah. Always love having him on the show. And he is, uh, he's, you know, a willing participant. So we, you know, going to have him back. But there's some great things we talked about and excited to share it with you. So, so wait a minute. How many people do we have on the podcast that aren't willing participants other than you and me? <laughs> <laughs> That's my point. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Well, let's get into it with Eric Decker and, uh, We'll talk more about everything after the interview. Two-thirds of small businesses that experience a cybersecurity breach end up closing their doors within six months. Cyber criminals are targeting your practice and coming after your most sensitive data. Visit us online and schedule a time to talk about what you can do to protect yourself, your patients, and your practice. Our website is securityfirstit.com. That's securityfirstit.com. Does your business work with medical practices? As a medical practice business associate, do you realize that if you have access to patient information, you have to follow the same HIPAA rules as your client? Call Cardin today at 678-292-5001 so they can assess your privacy and security practices to help ensure you are protected and prepared. Visit cardinhq.com to learn more. All right, David, we've both been excited to get Eric Decker back on the show again. And uh, it took some time, but he's yeah, here. I know. I'm, and now I'm we have my... him on video and he showed <laughs> up right. anyway. Yeah. He's being seen with us now, not just heard. Yeah. <laughs> not, not many people agree to come back a second time. <laughs> <laughs> or a third time. I, I know, it's, right? It's his yeah. third. It, oh, he is, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. gosh. I forgot about yeah. that. I believe I was your first, uh, you know, multi-series uh, podcast or something. Oh, yeah. He, he's yeah. he's 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 uh, a true glutton for punishment. So yeah. thanks for joining us, Eric. And we're really excited because we want to talk about today how things are going uh, with Hiccup, of course, but also just a discussion with you about the things that David and I have been covering recently in previous episodes that uh, are going on in healthcare and some other things that we're seeing. So, not to waste any time, how you doing? I'm living the dream. <laughs> <laughs> living the dream in isolation, having you know switched an organization into a, a remote workforce, and dealing with the pandemic to. Now uh, working on the distribution of the vaccine, which is super exciting to you know see that actually is coming to fruition and you know bringing the helping the organization through on on, on getting that in place. 
Uh, but, you know, and then also dealing with things like national warnings of imminent threat of ransomware attacks and, you know, many hospital systems getting shut down within a 48 hour period of time. It's, it's, it's I feel a little bit like a doomsayer here, but um, one of the things I've been talking about for several years has been my biggest fear is, is a, a, an attack against a regional system, not, not a, like a specific hospital system, but many hospital systems within a particular region and, and what kind of harm that could do. And, you know, just at the end of October, that's what we started seeing. Now, it didn't happen necessarily regionally, but it happened nationally. Yes. And it happened, you know, sort of widespread. and uh, During a widespread pandemic. During a pandemic, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, really, it's really awful. So I, it's trying times, you know, that we're yes. in. That thing, yeah, 2020, she just keeps on giving. Yep. <laughs> but I think, you know, along with, you know, we've got the ransomware alert. It came out, I was double checking last night. It came out the end of October. Yep. October 28th. 27th, 28th. <laughs> we've had a month. And we're yep. still, you know, we haven't heard everything. Now, the groups that we work with that are forensics groups, I'm hearing from them, and they're like, hey, can you answer questions if we need you, those kind of things. So I know it's more rampant than the news shows. What are your thoughts on it? Well, I mean, I definitely it is. You know, So first of all, the, there's only, I think this is the third time that our, there's been a joint notice from yeah. now CISA, HHS, ASPR, and um, HC3, I know it just it rattled out a whole bunch of acronyms there. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, and the FBI, of course, you know, so it, this is like one of those things where, you know, multi-federal agencies come together to, you know, issue these warnings. And the previous two times, the first one was WannaCry, and the second one was not uh, mm-hmm. And now this one, again, is ransomware related, it's Ryuk. So I, I think the, the important thing to note there is when... When the feds sound the alarm like this, you have to take it seriously. Now, we can have all kinds of conversations about did did it start off well? You know, did, <laughs> was there enough information at the beginning? You know, uh-huh. it, we all went through the same process there of trying to understand that. But it, it certainly raised, you know, the it heightened the awareness levels and the and, and the concern about what needs to happen. So what I'll what I I can say is I. I know that there has been, I think it's about 400 healthcare institutions that are on a list by these threat actors, this uh, Eastern European, Russian speaking threat actors that are causing these, uh, these attacks. And yeah, I think there was about a couple dozen maybe total that have been so far disrupted by it, but that's not to say that these guys are done, you know, and no. I mean, it just, it was just the first pass of it. And again, I know that there are, 400 some people on, you know, on, on 400 other hospital systems that are on these lists of, of potential targets from these actors. So it, it's scary. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, you know, it, it's moments like, this is a good moment for th- using things like Hiccup. This is a good moment for using things like Hick Ticker. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to throw my acronyms out again. Yes. Uh, you know, to if, if you don't know what to do to, you know, help prevent and, and respond to these, these actions, uh, it can get you sort of laser focused in on what are some meaningful activities to, to get ahead of it. Cause you don't want to be behind it at all. No, it, it's, you don't want it to be too late to think about it. That's right. And that's what we've been trying so desperately to get the message out. And even if you're not on that list of 400, you may be the in, mm-hmm. so to speak that, everybody's connected. They know it. They know there's a lot of data sharing. So if you're in the area with any of those 400, they're looking for ways in. Yeah. And, and yeah. And I'll just, you know, one, one other interesting, just no tidbit about how these threat actors work. You know, this is actually one of those cases where it's a multi crime syndicate organization where it's one organization breaks in, gets their credentials, gets the privileges, and then they mm-hmm. sell that off mm-hmm. to another, to the ransomers who want to use that to then deploy their ransom and extortion actions. So this is, it's not even that we're just talking about single groups here that are that no. are doing these things. And of course they change up, like, you know, initially mm-hmm. 
to be a little technical here, they're talking about, you know, it was TrickBot that that was the initial phishing, you know, mechanism that that were that they were using. And then it switched the bizarre loader. And you know, yeah. it's it's just there that's going to continue to happen. They're not gonna just walk away because, you know, uh, uh, they were found out in one instance. They're gonna shift their their tactics. Well, and and, the, and there's so many different elements. You know, when you've got this group, they're just worried about getting in. Mm-hmm. Then they shift or they split into two or they do, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a racket. Well, totally. And money changes hands as that happens. You know, they're selling, Mm -hmm. they sell that access. They sell, there's, there's even guarantees of extortion. Like, you know, we'll, we'll sell you X number of, of credentials and we'll guarantee you $5,000 worth of fraud. And if you don't get it, oh, sorry on us, here's a different set of credentials that'll get you that, you know that $5,000 of guaranteed fraud, you know, so it's, yeah, that's the, <laughs> that's who we're up against. Yeah. And people don't get that. I don't think, you know, when we talk passwords and all of that stuff, they see, uh, mm-hmm. you know, this is so inconvenient. I know David deals with that daily. Yeah. You, you would think after this year that you wouldn't hear anybody else say anything like, well, I can't possibly imagine that happening. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, but we we yeah. still hear it. It's like, oh well, I don't. You know, that's the worst case scenario. I don't know that I'll ever happen. And I'm looking at like 2020. <laughs> I mean, uh, that's that's totally valid. I mean, think of how many people talk about that with COVID in general. You know, I'm like, oh, it's not going to happen to me. It'll happen. You know, it's it's not that big of a deal until it happens to you, and it's the worst thing in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, and so that's that's actually kind of a human nature thing, unfortunately. You mm-hmm. know, and so it's trying to get ahead of that message and and demonstrating you know that importance is crucial so i mean here's here's another thing like why do they go after healthcare these these ransomers and extortionists because the impact of losing access to your systems and the ability to you know to shut down a practice is so impactful it's so incredibly impactful that they get their money Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it's it's highly successful, and there's weakness. You know, because healthcare generally, still, unfortunately, is is a bit behind the times. So they're prime targets for all of this. You know, and yeah, and, and you've got you know, not only do you have the problem of I'm not going to worry about it, but I am so overwhelmed I can't worry about it. Yeah, is the flip side, and I'm sure institutions like yours, you know, you guys are you know, just awake at night because there are times that I'm awake at night because of things, conversations I've had with our clients and I don't have to have that every day. Yeah. So congratulations on you guys getting through it so far. Please don't. <laughs> Jinx it. <laughs> Jinx it. I'm not going to say, oh, you're awesome. Nope, 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 nope. Yeah, well, uh, Don and I do were that. talking, maybe, maybe it was last episode, I'm not sure which, but we were talking about how with uh, with vendors and, and how much access they have now in, in different areas that the organization can be doing everything right and have mm-hmm. everything locked down the way it should. But then you have this third-party business associate or even sometimes not even a business associate. It's just a vendor. Mm-hmm. You, know? Um, you know, think about Home Depot, Target. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, you, you know, and all, all of a sudden they cause this big, huge breach for you. Um, yeah. So it's... Uh, just another thing to worry about. Yes, absolutely. I mean, the, the the ecosystem of connectedness between within the healthcare environment is is so integrated, and it has to be because that's how healthcare runs. And and so and that's you know another reason for having solid third party risk management programs is really really important. We, we don't really cover that in in Hiccup uh, per se, but there is another document from the Healthcare Sector Coordinating Council, the Hicks Scrim. Yep, uh, we covered it. Management. Oh, you did? Oh, very cool. Yeah. yeah. So that that's a great template to use and and to consider. You know, I like to think about it in maybe two facets, perhaps three facets, uh, which which is there's obviously a connectiveness piece to this, you know, so you might have some type of connectivity, be it that, you know, these vendors need to be able to log into your systems to do some of their work, or maybe you have permanent, you know, connections with them, VPN tunnels, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Those, that action right there has nothing to do with data. It has everything to do with access. And so you got to be careful about that. You've of course got the data element of this, you know, where, 
you're, you're either they're either in your environment, you know, working with sensitive information, or perhaps you're shipping them data, and they're providing a data service to you. And so you might not have a connectedness, you know, piece there, but you do have risk of the data potentially being misappropriated or misused. And so you got to be on top of that. And and, and some of those contracts and the, and those and those supplier relationships are not technology relationships. So that's one one way that organizations get they might lose it, you know, because they think like. Well, technology is not involved. We don't need to involve IT or, or cybersecurity. And they're like, no, 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 this is a this is a professional services engagement where we're sharing our information off to you. We're disclosing the information, and so it's equally as important, you know, that we <laughs> we cover all of that. So, for the listeners, I, I I would really focus in on both of those things. Not don't just get so locked in about the data because yeah. I I still think there's a lot of that. Like, well, there's no PHI, so it doesn't matter. No, there's. The, the ransom risk, the ecosystem, the cyber attack risk is the one that we you have to manage here. The resiliency, you know, associated to keeping your systems up. And so, yeah, you know, that's the yeah, that, uh, hamster on a wheel thing, right? That, yeah. That's funny because I just got an email a couple of days ago. I shared part of it with Donna, but it was uh, fortunately not a client, but it's kind of one of these people that call when they need you kind of things. And and they had a breach of their email account. And, and their response was, well, yeah, there's sensitive information in there, but I don't think it's PHI, so I don't think we have to worry. I'm like, <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not even going to look. We think. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, though, so I don't know about your organization, but we have been encouraging everybody to evaluate the vendors more specifically. and. Oh, well, I only have to worry about the ones I have a BAA with. Okay, but wait. You you're going to let them get into the a- air conditioning system? Is it is it segmented? Is anybody worried about that, you know? There's a lot more to it today, and every time you connect something, you're connecting something, and people yeah. don't get it. So, that is one of the things that we're hoping we can use hiccup to promote. Because it does talk about medical devices. You know, I was doing an assessment and uh, just this week, and people are doing great. They're going down through there, and then we ask them about devices that might not, you know, do you have anything that's not encrypted that has PHI? Well, we have this ultrasound machine, uh-huh. but, you know, it's not, it's, it's password protected, and it's in the office. Can it move? Uh-huh. You know? So those kinds of little pieces and parts are one of the things that we hope we can promote through Hiccup without having to say HIPAA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, we're, you know, we, uh, so Hiccup is two years old now. And maybe we should say for the listeners, they might not even ever heard about this thing before. Yeah. Maybe yeah. Little, let's do little that. recap of <laughs> what, what the hell is this thing? <laughs> yeah. Heck, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, so, yes, yes. so just a, a, a quick little, you know, recap. So uh, Health and Human Services pulled together a task group uh, through a legislative mandate under the Cybersecurity Act of 2015. And within that act, there was a, a section called 405D, which calls for aligning cybersecurity practices across the healthcare industry and it being uh, in partnership with the federal government and led by industry. So uh, 2017 or 16, I'm losing track of my years, uh, <laughs> HHS formed the original group for how, how we were going to you know, come together and, and manage that. That's when I got involved and they asked me to be the industry lead for, for that effort. And the, the, the first publication that we created as a result of this multifaceted uh, public and, and uh, private uh, group was the development of this document called Health Industry Cybersecurity Practices, Managing Threats and Protecting Patients, or HICCP, H-I-C-P. So that document really covers, uh, it, it stratifies best practices for small, medium, and large organizations. It's very specific to the, you know, to which one you are, small, medium, or large, around managing the five most common threats that we, we face within, uh, within the healthcare industry. The team, you know, we released it in 2000. 
December 28th of 2018. I remember the day. <laughs> very happy. Very it's when the it. baby was born. Yeah, it was. It was born. It's, it's a toddler now. It's walking. <laughs> Uh, and, and but we're, we're you know we the, the group didn't uh, disassemble. In fact, I mean it, it came back together again, and we're working on all kinds of different elements of this. So one is updating Hiccup to keep it modern and fresh. We have a, a, a group that's working on uh, educational materials as a as a component of, of Hiccup. So w- different ways of engaging with the community. And, and David and Donna, you know, have been wonderful partners in uh, in, in that group to to develop some content there. And then we have a third group that is focusing on enterprise cybersecurity as a component of enterprise risk management and really building a framework for how this is now for mostly the mediums and larger size organizations, but how you how you bring cyber to the top level, to the board level, to the senior executive level, and the methodologies associated to that to see if we can get something a little more consistent, you know, across the industry. So that's that's the basis. When we say hiccup, and you know, we're we're talking about that and four or five D, you know, that's that's the genesis of of this conversation. Yeah, we've got to come up with a better name. Everybody keeps talking about that. We have to have like a snazzy little name. <laughs> well, we we're kind of what we're trying to do is like what Kleenex did, right? So what Kleenex is tissue paper. So we're we're trying to like four or five D is you know is the thing. It's gonna take time. <laughs> <laughs> it's it is a little. You know, people think it's it's, a 401k or a 403b or. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we we need some marketing help because clearly we were worried about cybersecurity and still are. But it is very interesting. And if you do want to be part of the, you know, participate in the group, uh, you know, we certainly uh, can, you know, connect you, you can just send an email to uh what is it the csa 405 d at hhs.gov yeah there you go and we'll have that on the website so that you can do it and you know maybe someday there'll be orientation (laughs) 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 Uh, that's an inside thing i did find out you can't join and just sit there no don't do that don't do Eric will call you out. <laughs> that yeah. happened to David. I'm in my second <laughs> meeting and I'm still trying to figure out, you know, who's the players in this thing and what's everybody's role and, you know, really trying to figure things out. Next thing I know, I hear Eric go, David, that'd be perfect for you to volunteer for. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, it's great to be known. That's, yes. the, that's just the way it is. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's when I go, yes, m- me and Donna will be glad to do that. <laughs> Yeah, but it, it was one of the areas I was already working on anyway. So we're good. Yep. Kind of. I just don't want to work with David. But the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's like, what did you volunteer me for? I was like, I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> but the, for those who haven't had a chance to go, we've done several discussions about Hiccup, the value we see in it. We've had multiple interviews with Eric discussing it. There are five threats that it uh, evaluates. And I tell people those five threats apply to any business. This Mm -hmm. is not healthcare only. And the fact that it's broken down to small, medium, and large, it takes it in a similar way to the CIS-20, the CIS-20 approach that they're doing, but it it gives you the not technical and the technical. Mm -hmm. And that makes it hard to do these uh, uh, updates and and publish things that are helpful. But if you follow 405D at, uh, is it Ask405D on Twitter, they're putting out a lot of good information. I love the prescription bottle for, uh, so there's, there's some tools that can help with your education program, they can help with you making decisions. They can help you make the business decisions about what risks to worry about. I don't know, maybe ransomware. And you, I want to do things for ransomware. You can actually go there and see if I'm worried about ransomware, what should I do? Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, the so the, the document itself is 250 pages. I mean, it's big. Uh, but it, it, this is not one of those things you read front to back. You know, I mean, the, 
that unless you're maybe, a nerd like me, right? <laughs> <laughs> or you're writing the thing like me, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But but like the main document is is really like probably the, the easiest to consume, you know, because it's mm-hmm. not technical at all. And then the technical volumes, of course, I think of that more of like an encyclopedia or a recipe book, you know, where you want to dig in and like do some work on uh, enhancing your, your email protection schemes or what, what do you need to do on the endpoint or network related or medical device. You know, those are all different practices that get that break themselves out into very specific, not instruction, but it's, it's more like uh, I think of it like as a catalyst. So it, it helps you get over the hurdle of understanding all that content that's out there. Cause we, we didn't mm-hmm. want to create a new content. We didn't want to, we didn't want to like uh, this great series in, in NIST, you know, the NIST 800 series that talk a lot about cybersecurity uh, stuff. You, you already mentioned the SysTop 20. We, we actually aligned to SysTop 20 in, in Hiccup. So we're trying to synthesize all of that into something that just is very actionable. Like, you know, you want to do an EDR, you know, deployment. Great. These are the things that you need to consider as you're, as you're doing that. And then we also have tools in the back end, you know, to help augment this. You know, we we built a whole threat matrix, threat to practice matrix. So if you want to, you know, put some protections in place around ransomware, well, we've done the mapping for you that shows you directly what's going to, you know, get you the biggest bang for the buck. And then indirectly, what's going to get you some, you know, additional bang for the buck. Not everything in Hiccup is equal to protecting against ransomware as an, as, as an example. But that's that's how it's how it can be used in a flexible manner. Yeah, I so. love the updated matrix, and uh, you know, it's not the easiest thing to find. So let us know if you want it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but that's that's we. I there is going to be a website coming. I'm telling you, <laughs> <laughs> COVID really messed yeah. everything up. Yeah, it was. It was in the master plan for this year. I mean, it was. It you was. Know, I, I was in on the fall meetings and it was so like, oh, this is going to be great. And things oh. look like, I mean, I remember that first meeting. What, in January, we were all excited. We're going to have the meeting in person. And then <laughs> Delta still has my money. For that. <laughs> they yeah. have like a, a good bit of my money. So uh, we got to get to where I can go places again. Yeah. Uh, but I think uh, that if, you know, our big thing that we started discussing in our last, you know, overall group meeting is how to get the word out more. Uh-huh. And anybody that is our, you know, our listeners, they'll send us stuff, which by the way, thanks to Treat for his uh, $50 donation to us for Tuesday giving day. Oh, cool. It is greatly appreciated, but I did get a anonymous message that the money was for David to buy a nicer dress to wear and please don't make it low cut. So <laughs> <laughs> I had to acknowledge uh, that donation and that's fun. Yeah. Anyway, uh, but Overall, if you guys out there want to participate, you have some ideas of how we can use these things or you want to do some things with it, please let us know because we really want to get the word out. These tools are great, Mm -hmm. and it helps communicate between the non-technical and the technical. That's my favorite part about it, you know, especially the small you know, when we go in and we have we're working with several startups that are, let's say, uh, there's some that are dealing with COVID kind of things. And so they're just flying at 100 miles an hour, but they need to do these things. So we're using the small hiccup guide and saying, OK, let's start here. Uh, to get that done, if you are a large entity and you've done nothing, go to the small hiccup guide, please. Post haste, and but they help with that. I don't know what to do, mm-hmm. and and the the main guide is great education. So anybody that's got some ideas, we're open to hear it. Please let us know. I just had to get that plug out there before I forget because you know my brain's like an etch a sketch. <laughs> But Eric has done, uh, you know, a ton of work and, and don't, you know, donated a ton of time and your employer has as well. So I am uh, excited about what we have the potential to do with this stuff and especially yeah. taking that, I, you know, you can walk into a group that has not paid attention. What is it, David, the doctor? 
Schmipper. 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 <laughs> <laughs> saw somebody say that in a post the other day, hippa schmippa, and I'm like, where did they get that? <laughs> but you could take that in. It's not talking about HIPAA. It's talking about your business risk. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a lot of our conversations in what we've been doing with the educational material, which yep. should come out soon. <laughs> yep. It's, no, it's, it's, it's very – it's, I think it's going through clearance right now. I mean, I've, oh, I've yeah. already signed off on it. So <laughs> yesterday, yesterday we did some updates. You'll get to see, but uh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. But I, I was really pleased with where it was. Right. Really excited about it, and gonna miss Anna, who's leaving the group. So yeah, yeah. Darn it. There's also, you know, just other resources. We, we do the the 405D post as well. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a, I think yeah, every yeah. other month. And that's actually on a website. So you can go to the, the healthsectorcouncil.org slash the 405D post or just, or just Google 405D post and you'll find it. it. It should take you right there. Probably easier. But, you know, that, that is a, that's a newsletter that is put out by the 405D team. And, and every other month, it's a member of the task group that actually um, takes a, a topic, you know, of interest it's not necessarily directly pulled from hiccup, but it's, it's something that is relevant to, you know, right. to what's going on. So, I mean, I, I wrote the first article and I did it on a simple enterprise risk management model to, to, to use like super easy, super uh, clean. Uh, it doesn't, it probably won't work for like a huge, large organization that's, you know, trying to understand this, but somebody who's just trying to get their head around, like well, what is mm-hmm. cyber and ERM and how does this even work? Like, it's like a, page and a half, you know, article uh, with some visuals, you know, how this stuff sort of uh, comes together. And, and, and there's just been other great contributors, you know, to, to that, uh, to that post as well. So I would recommend people look at that too. I don't know, David, maybe we need to have a repository in our resources of all these things out there for everybody. That's work for you to do on your free time. Thank you. But uh, <laughs> Eric, yeah, Eric can tell you all the it. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, you know, I only need two hours of sleep. That's, a- That's right. Well, <laughs> you know, I don't know what you're asking for these days. but uh, <laughs> So to, you know, kind of wrap up the hip up, hick, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's hard. The hiccup specific stuff. Sure. We know we've got the, the educational materials, which I think are great. They're coming out. And not just because I worked on them. But... <laughs> uh, <laughs> And then we're looking at doing some updates to add more content and, uh, I don't know, it's add more content and create more details. It's kind of. So I think, I think some of it is, you know, we've actually looked at the 10 practices. Uh, We're actually adjusting a couple of, I think mostly one of them. We're expanding, you know, practice 10 to to be more robust uh, from just just policies to, to moral governance and oversight in general. Um, and that was, you know, as it, as all things, you know, you, you, you produce, uh, you produce a, a first product and then you mature that product, you, you hear feedback, you figure out what, you know, where the deficiencies are and you, and you uh, scale it up. Uh, so I think there's, there's that there's, you know, many of the practices are very robust in their practicality and, and kind of going back to what I was talking about before, just like helping you step into this and, and make progress. Some of them are not as robust. And so we're going to really be, you know, bolstering those areas to, to get a little bit more helpful. I think. Yeah. For folks. Uh, yeah. A little bit more detail. This more detail. Yeah. More content. I mean, we're not trying to make this thing, you know, thousands of pages long. I mean, that's, that's, that would not be meaningful, but but definitely something that can help you get over the hurdle a little bit more. Well, and, and, you know, and cybersecurity is changing. Totally. Since 2018. <laughs> you know, and, and to that end, like there's, I mean, some of those things that we called out and hicked up two years ago were like the creme de la creme. And now they're kind of like, is it really still the creme de la creme or are, are there other things that are better off? I mean, it, it really has changed that much already in just two years. So we're, we're, it, it's always a good time to take stock and make sure that, the industry as a whole really believes that these are the practices that that we should be um, we should we should be advocating for, because I think that's that's one of the beautiful things about Hiccup is it's 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 an industry sort of statement of what is 
what does hygiene look like, you know, and to, to manage against the threats that we, that we face. So, yeah, so it, the, that's what that's what this uh, wave two that we, we call it internal links designation. That's what that group is working on. And our goal is we really want something to come out in 2021. And so I, I hope I hope that we're going to get there. <laughs> we'll do our part. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you bring up a good point that I want to kind of emphasize is that if you're as an organization, if you're still doing the same thing you were doing three, four, five years ago, then you're in trouble. Yeah. It's, it changes that rapidly. There's many times I go into an organization, they're like, yeah, we did all that stuff two or three years ago. And I'm like, dude, that's a lifetime. You can't keep doing the same old stuff. And and I see it often. I even see IT companies that are still doing the same things they were doing five years ago, which is very scary. I mean, just yes. this pandemic alone. I mean, if you didn't adjust and change, then that's probably problematic because mm-hmm. It introduced so much variance, you know, into how mm-hmm. we do our business and you have to secure that, you know, so, yeah. Well, and, you know, to remember and reiterate, if, if, if people didn't see it before, healthcare is a critical infrastructure industry, number one. And number two, it's about caring for patients and our work is what, you know, is that we prevent that one last PETA that keeps them, you know, from going over the edge sometimes because they're moving at such a pace in some of these hot spots that if things are slowed down in any way and they're exhausted, so many of them haven't, you know, we talk about how long it's been and so many of them haven't had a day off since then. Yeah. So I, I see it as important that we're doing our part to support those that are providing care and trying our best to keep the ransomware out and keep the hygiene going and all of that at the same time. And so many people see cybersecurity. I, you know, I heard a, a conversation on, I don't know, one of the cyber podcasts where they were talking about how we in, or well, they were talking about the role of the CISO, CISO, whatever, you know, the you want to call it today, became the party of no. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what everybody saw them as. And I think it's important that through things like Hiccup, we're able to start to communicate different. And David and I even just did an episode on the importance of us communicating the information and listening to the needs of the people we're supporting. And in this environment, we've had to bring that to the forefront. And if you haven't, you're missing out on some important message that you should be getting. Yep. I like the new tagline that we've been talking about in 405D is uh, cyber safety is patient safety. And yes. Absolutely true. I mean, just Look at mm-hmm. look at all these ransomware cases that have happened. There's a New York Times article that just sort of described the impact at the University of Vermont of what happened there. And, you know, chemotherapy patients couldn't be seen. And that is absolutely a patient safety thing. They couldn't get yeah. critical treatment, you know. And so, yeah. and that's because the systems were down. So it's, it's not, you know, this isn't about the, um, I, I don't want to discount the medical device security. It's incredibly important. And everybody was is still to a degree, you know, worried about the you know hack the pacemaker and cause a shock kind of kind of thing. Yeah, that's not. It can happen. Don't get me wrong. Or the the infusion pump, you know, sort of hack. Those things can happen. Mm-hmm. But what's really happening now is the systems are being taken offline. They're being disrupted. They're not being able to be used for care purposes, and then indirectly, the, the patients are suffering because of it. And mm-hmm. And it's absolutely occurring, you know, and so like that's that's patient safety. That's that's what cyber safety, patient safety means. And, you know, we've got to get better at that. Yeah. yeah. And that, 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 that whole, is absolutely it. That whole first do no harm, the Hippocratic yes. Oath. I mean, they really need to go back and say, look, this includes cybersecurity, folks. <laughs> yeah, and, and we and tried that, that message. They didn't care for it. They, yeah, you know. I bet. And I think part of the problem, you know, I'm going to call on the CISOs here too. I mean, part of the, part of the issue here is it's, we, we don't get to stand up on a high horse and, you know, dictate and say yes or no, or, you know, play traffic cop. I mean, if that's the route that you're taking, you're going to, you're not going to, 
be successful because the business is going to move around you. So you have to be a business enabler first and foremost. Like that's, you got to be a solution. Yes. You've got to be at the table, hearing what the needs are and then, and, 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 and like, motioning people left or right, like, okay, we, let's do this. Let's, let's get this done. You know, let, let's consider these options as well with these risks and, and such. And, and then you're at the table and you're solving problems instead of at the table, creating problems for the, for the <laughs> business, you know, trying to figure out well, right. how do we get around these cyber people because they just get in my way all the time, you know? So if that's your approach, it, it's, it's just, it won't, that that's been the approach in healthcare. And that's where we have, that's where we are today. So just, you know, consider that, I guess, as well. It, it's really time for change. And, you know, it's a message that we're doing our best to get out there. And, you know, I mean, for five years, our tagline has said, it's not about compliance, it's about patient care. Right. For a reason. So I, uh, I hope that more people see it that way because these folks on the front lines they need all the help they can get and support they can get. So let's don't create any kind of, you know, blockage to their ability to manage what they're overwhelmed by. So, and, you know, ransomware, key element. Um, but I don't want us to go too far down that rabbit hole. So <laughs> let's go to uh, the last couple of episodes, David and I talked about some of these new topics. And when I want to get your input on the impact that you think the information sharing changes uh, that are rolling out, they were supposed to be, but you know, like everything else, they've been put off until 2021. We discussed you know, I've seen even a lot of people in their presentations say, well, we anticipate that it'll be providers and business associates that are the ones doing the information blocking. And 21st century pretty, cares. Huh? <laughs> 21st century cares. Is that what we're talking about? <laughs> yeah. <All right>. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. to me, I look at this and say, I, you know, if they're doing the right thing under patient right of access, which has yeah. been a huge thing the providers can't do much more. You know, they, they, yeah. if they do the right thing there and they follow that rule, I don't see information blocking being the big issue. Let's just focus on that. But boy, these vendors, and I know that you deal with a vast number more than we have to. So what do you see as the impact going to be or so is? Yeah, I think first of all, the just 21st century cures, right of access, information blocking, you know, this was one of the sort of orient everybody. It was a rule that was uh, within the legislation of the 21st century cures, which I think actually came out in 2016. And there's different sections and provisions that um, had different enforcement dates to it. And so the ONC uh, is uh, the regulator on a component of it. And then CMS also has a piece to this. I like to think of think of it as like meaningful use version three, you know, to a degree, because <laughs> I mean, yeah. if you really think about what what meaningful use was about it was uh, interoperability and, uh, get, and getting the data digitized and in the hands of the patients. And that's that was what its initial hope was supposed to be. So get everybody into the EMRs. And then suddenly and magically everything will flow back and forth and we won't have to, people won't have to walk up with charts, paper charts everywhere they go. And it's just accessible. Right. Right. Um, so, so it wasn't about getting a check. <laughs> uh, that was, that was the carrots <laughs> that to come along. Uh, and, and there were, I mean, I don't want to poo poo this. I mean, there were definitely elements of interoperability and exchange that, that happened because, you know, mm -hmm. you've got, you got in, you know, into the EMR, but some elements of this, of that, that, that full exchange of information, uh, or even just giving the information back to the patient themselves. And uh, under HIPAA, you have a right of access clause on the privacy rule that uh, they have a right of access to get to their medical information. You know, I, that's, that's kind of why I couch this whole uh, 21st century cures and info blocking as, as a, either a meaningful use uh, addition or a right of access clause, because it's about, getting the patients ultimately in the next couple of years, all their new term electronic health information, mm -hmm. <laughs> which, 
which is essentially everything in the designated record set back into the hands of the patients in the manner and means by which they want to consume it. So that can mean, you know, your patient portal, you know, and going to the patient portal and, and getting access to it there. But it could also mean that, you know, some app developer, mobile app developer has, has created an app that fits the standards that have been defined within the rule. And you want that app to connect to your, to the EMR that you're participating in. And you have to deliver that information to the patient because they asked for it. Mm -hmm. So what, what the info blocking component to that is, is that the hospital systems and providers will not block the, the uh, delivery of that information and the means that the patient has asked for it with one, there are eight exceptions to the rule uh, that you can follow, you know, and, and the big one that people are talking about is harm. So, and, yeah. and this is big discussions going on right now. It's like, uh, you know, think about lab results and test results. Huntington's disease is the biggest one that, that is the big use case. So if you have a prognosis of, of Huntington's disease, it's a terminal disease and there's nothing you can do about it. Do you want to really release that to the patient before there's been a consultation with the provider? Or would that actually cause, you know, potential mental anguish or harm or worse to somebody who receives that diagnosis before they actually have, you know, a way of counseling, you know, the conversation. So things like that are where organizations are at right now, sort of discussing, you know, what, what fits within these particular exceptions? When do you release? When do you not release? And it's not so much not releasing ever. It's just more about like, at what time frame do you do it under Right. while still sort of maintaining the reasonableness and accessibility back to the patient. I think it's actually a fantastic rule. I mean, as a patient, I love the idea of being able to have my information from any of the various places that I go in one spot, you know, so mm -hmm. that I can easily share that, you know, with a new provider that I'm coming to. I mean, heck, we're still using faxes today. I know. As crazy as that sounds. And and like, so maybe think of like 21st century cures as the death of the fax, because that's <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the things that we're trying to do is, oh, is yeah. get rid of having to use those kinds of things. Yeah, they have to have in healthcare courses in college, they have to have a special class on what a fax is, I'm sure. Because right. <laughs> uh, no one knows what they are. And yeah. yeah, I mean, one of the areas that I thought was interesting is on the exceptions, because from the provider side, one of the things is I can't integrate with these other systems without paying enormous fees. Yeah. And so that reasonable profit, I think, uh, to, to us on in, in that part of it is, you know, as a small provider, I can want to do the right thing, but if they won't give me the data unless I pay $25,000 a year, yeah, you know, I'm not going to be able to do that. And uh, I think that's going to make a huge difference because the, you know, the health systems, the world is different for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a $25,000 budget item is like bold on, you know, yeah. a lot of the groups we work with. Yeah. And the other area that I really want to know if you've heard discussions about is the ruling that health systems can donate uh -huh. Cybersecurity, we just did an episode on that yep. and what those rules say. There's a lot of concerns that we had. Uh, if sure. you guys are talking about it, go listen to the last episode because. <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't listened to it, so who knows if I'm going to say. Well, it's not out yet. It's not <laughs> oh, out okay. yet. You, you can't. You can't. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I'm interested to know what you know from that side. You know, we don't, sure. we don't get to hear that. Yeah, so this this kind of goes back to Stark Law and uh, anti-competitive right, right. restrictions that are in place. Uh, but again, kind of going back to the, this whole concept of the ecosystem that we all work in. The, so the, the, the rule is, uh, and, and again, I have not unpacked this to a degree, so I apologize for anybody listening. Oh, I know lawyers. I threw it on you. Yeah, especially the lawyers <laughs> are going to say, Eric is wrong. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, the rule is ultimately that, I think it's CMS, uh, that, that says you can donate cybersecurity services, and there's definitely definition around what those services are, if it's software yep. or hardware, you know, those kinds of things, 
to um, uh, affiliated uh, entities, affiliated practices. So these are these are practices that are not owned by your health system. So the big question is like, why? Why? Why would a big system, you know, donate cybersecurity services out to these, you know, these affiliations? There's a there's a few reasons. Uh, you know, one is the, we, what one thing you just talked about, Donna, about you know, twenty five thousand dollars is a lot of money for these for these providers. Yet at the same token health that the, the health environment the health ecosystem and industry is moving into these big networks you know where people don't necessarily practice on their own anymore you know and or or in the next 10 years they won't you know it'll, you're going to be affiliated in one way or another with one or multiple you know networks that are out there and every single uh, if you think about it, a hub and spoke kind of situation every single spoke to the to the main you know health system is an entry of risk into the whole ecosystem. And if you're gonna obligate the practices to meet a certain level of cybersecurity hygiene before they can affiliate with you, chances are they're not gonna be able to have the capital and the dollars to do that. Now, previous to this rule, you couldn't give, so you couldn't give this away to them as, a, as an incentive you know, to join in. And so it, it was, it was restrictive, you know, in, in the ability, you can charge them for it, you know, and, and that can be done, but then going back again, the $25,000 is a lot of money for them. You know, it, it's, it's a challenge there. So it's, it's not so, I think about this as it's not so much, well, it's, it's about protecting the whole ecosystem and, and all of this, you know, it, it, it's about them. It's also about the main hospital network, you know, in kind of going back again to, you know, we, we hear a lot like for the small practices, why would they come after me? Well, maybe they'll come after you because they're interested in getting to your partner, you yeah. know, and you're the weak link in that chain. And people like me look at that and go, oh, okay, what are we going to do <laughs> to protect <laughs> this? And what are, what are the options that I have available to protect this, this system when you can't donate? Now, we're not at my institution, you know, that's not a thing that, that we're doing. It's, a, it's something we're looking at, but I know that at uh, other larger institutions, that is absolutely uh, a, an ask that has been out there. You know, they have the, they've got the capital, they've got the operating margins to be able to eat that loss, you know, in order to uh, allow for the system itself to be more secure. Yeah. So, but it, 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 it is, I mean, it makes sense from that standpoint, but, you know, if you don't have a firm boundary, because we see this when we, here's the net of it is, you know, the difference between the clinics owned by the health system and the ones not. When we talk to the people in the clinics owned by the health system, uh, well, I mean, you know, David can speak to it probably is better than me, but they are kind of like the stepchildren. Yeah. So they're already not getting on the ones they own not getting you know we're we're i get a ton of questions about training from people that work in that area that need advice and they don't get it you know there's a good number of those so our concern that we're talking about is if that's happening with the ones you own what are you going to do with the ones you know, you know that you're 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 donating because well, my, you're yeah my guess would be that the the systems that are in that situation are not going to be donating services. You know, if they're, if they're not managing their own clinics and, and that that's not part of the family, then I don't think they're going to, well, I, I should, <laughs> well I but be. you ask them, they'll tell you they are. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. I don't need no stinking cybersecurity. <laughs> yeah. We, we know we're prepared to hear hospital takes care of everything because they already tell us that. Yeah. And they don't. Yeah. You know, so encourage all of the people on your side to listen to the episode we are going to publish sure. just before this one, where we talk about what we see as our concern about making sure there's some specific boundaries. But I wanted to know really from you is your, it is something that makes sense. We knew that, but how, how seriously, you know, and how quickly will that evolve into something that anybody's doing? And I just wanted to see your personal opinion, not the opinion of the universe. Sure. <laughs> yes. <'cause, laughs> um, I think it, 
I, I think like probably like 21st century cures, it takes time for this stuff to bake in and, and people consume it and understand what it truly means. So I wouldn't, uh, I mean, I, let, let me say this. I, I actually, I know there are certain healthcare institutions that have been waiting for this. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be acting on it and happy about it. Um, and I, and those, those healthcare institutions are the ones that are much farther along in their affiliations, full integrated delivery network. You know, like that's, there's a big systems that are out there that like the really, truly big systems. Uh, and, and that's, like I said before, I mean, the cost for them to do this, to donate it is insignificant compared to the, the cost of what it would be on the, on the practices themselves. I, I think for the, for everybody else, it's going to be part of, it's a, it's a strategic decision as far as your business development strategy is concerned, you know, and what your MA strategy is. And you have to, you have to look at that as, you know, what do you want to do? I mean, do you want to, do you want to enforce, you know, have, have these practices pay in, you know, to the larger pie? Do you want to provide it as an incentive, you know, to potentially join in? How does it ultimately fit into your ERM models, your enterprise risk management models and, and what you're managing there? I will say, you know, without naming technology vendors, <laughs> these EMRs, you know, like part of, part of the genesis of this is like you, you for these non-affiliated practices is you, you, um, you actually offer up a part of your EMR to them. Mm -hmm. And so you're on shared platforms, kind of going again, back to interoperability and everything we were talking about there. That does not come, it, it, it's not a SaaS model, you know, where it's like all nicely compartmentalized and instanced and everything. And, and everybody gets their own little spot in the pie and, and that's how it works. It's tightly integrated. You know, so if you do that, you there's just an expectation that's that security has to be in place at, at these practices, and so um, it, it, it's then a matter of uh, the business decision. How are you going to do it? Are we going to donate it, or are we going to charge for it? You know, and and that's a there's a financial model that has to be built there to to understand the feasibility of it. The other thing I'll say, just to kind of since we're talking about these practices, is another another way you can use hiccup. For, for these larger health systems that are uh, undergoing these, uh, and this is not so much an acquisition as it is a partnership and an affiliation, you could actually do an assessment against these practices pursuant to the small practice, the small technical volume of hiccup to get a sense of like, how risky is this? Where are they mm -hmm. at? You know, what's sort of the benchmark and, and where things are? And then use that as your overall strategy for like what you're going to do related to cyber, you know, and, and within there. And so I, I think I, I've heard from somebody else that is actually doing that. And I thought it was just really cool. I love uh, the idea. Yeah. And, and, you know, so like leverage hiccup to be part of your risk model of your risk assessment, you know, or your questionnaires that you're, you're sending out to these places to, to understand, like just benchmark them on where they're at. All the vendors that I question will be able to blame you for that now. Great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now there's another hundred uh, questions that we have to answer. I know. That, that includes David. So <laughs> he, he hates it. <laughs> it's, a, it's like a revenge for me. Sure. But I really, really, I know everybody's uh, short on time. You know, we could talk to you a hundred times. So don't. Doubt, folks, that we'll have Eric back. Clearly, we all just jib jab together. But you got anything that you want to add in a parting shot, Mr. Decker? I know Eric spelled the proper way. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> parting shots. Uh, I, I, I honestly, I think the, the the biggest thing that I just want to impress upon people is I, I know. People think that hacks and such will not happen to them, and so it's it's hard to rally around you know putting cyber in place and, and going to the expense of, of of doing that. The thing that I just want to impress upon you is it's guaranteed it will happen. You know, will it happen to you in particular as an individual? That's to be determined. But just like within the COVID pandemic, people are dying, and and you know how we have. 
I won't get into the political side of this, but, <laughs> That's so but it, it's happened, you know, and, yeah. and it's, it's guaranteed that people are going to be infected. It's guaranteed that people will die, you know, as, as a result of it, just based on the nature of this disease. And, you know, you've got to, you've got to take your precautions, you know, you've got to mask up, you've got to wash your hands, you got to socially distance, you know, in order to protect you and your loved ones. And, and it's the same way within cyber for, for all of this. These guys are out there. These criminal organizations are out there. It's a billion dollar industry, multiple billions of dollar industry for fraud. And the unattended potential consequences of these attacks that are happening, which is not so much about, well, I mean, it is. It, it's about the theft of data. That's a way to monetize it. But it's also about the disruption of your environment as a way of monetizing it. And that's where this is all shifting or maybe adding to instead of saying shifting it's just it's just another way to you know to exploit your your business and you know just please take it seriously there are there are definitely tools that we have produced that are out there that are free you know it just takes your time you know in order to do it and work with wonderful people like Donna and David and and their businesses to help you out and we didn't pay him <laughs> to do that that's awesome Score. <laughs> Checks in the mail. Checks in the mail. Uh, all right. Well, hope the rest of the year goes well for you, Eric. I'm sure we'll cross paths. <laughs> wink, wink. But uh, <laughs> thanks for your time. It's always, always appreciated. You're welcome back anytime. If you want to talk to us, you just let us know if we haven't sure. called. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. All right. Take care. Thank you. All right. That was our interview with Eric Decker. Amazing, as always. Yes. So. I know. I always learn a lot. And the other thing is like, he keeps up with all this stuff. I'd right. be going, let me look at my notes about what that is. <laughs> he's, he's I didn't warn him we were going to go down the path and wander aimlessly. He's always fun with that. Yeah, yeah, he's on it. But uh, love yeah. his, his insight and, uh, and the information he brings is always spot on. And due to our scheduling issues, we couldn't just like keep talking as long as we normally like to so that we could have <laughs> drug it out into a couple of episodes. So he's volunteered. I think he's volunteered to <laughs> join us again sometime soon. And uh, probably after we get some of these updates to hiccup out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or, you know, additional hiccup items. Right. We'll and go we, with that. We, you know, we're waiting on you, Donna, to get those updates done. <laughs> Well, I have look. done my part. <laughs> when that stuff comes out, my touches will be all over it. Yeah. If there's a typo, you go, I knew she was a participating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're just there to make sure HIPAA is spelled right. But it's not in there. <laughs> so we don't have to worry about it. Yeah. yeah. All right. So y'all check out Hiccup if you're not. There are so many ways to use it. Got ideas just talking with Eric. So don't hesitate to get out there and see how you can utilize it in your environments, there are many, many ways. Yep. And just just know it's H-I-C-P, or you can even Google 405-D, and, yep. and it'll get you there. But H-I-C-P, 405-D, or do it together. There yeah. you go. Exactly. All right. Anything else, Donna, before we close them out? I say we close them out, brother. All right. We're going to send you home early, folks. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know when it is. We're clueless. <laughs> <laughs> we sure don't. All right, folks, that is our show for today. Thanks for listening. And as always, be sure to follow us and share it out on your favorite social media and join us now on YouTube. Mm-hmm. See our smiling faces and all the crazy <laughs> antics we bring that you can't see from the podcast. <laughs> be sure to give us a rating or a podcast out. Leave a review. We still work for reviews, as always. I know. And thanks so. to Carl for that fantastic review mm-hmm. on LinkedIn. Oh, it's greatly appreciated. Absolutely. And um, and we do have donors out there. So if you want to donate, and we did have somebody donate, as we said on this episode when we recorded with Eric, somebody donated to the uh, Black Dress David Fund or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, much appreciated. And yeah. if you want to donate, uh, please let me know. Shoot, if we get enough money, I'll wear a black dress. <laughs> Uh-oh. I sure will. There you go. <laughs> Maybe we should start one of those little thermometer donation yeah. things <laughs> i think you'll keep moving the top unless i get you to commit we'll be back on that <laughs> i know i know all right so as always remember that hipaa is not about compliance it's about patient care you've been listening to the help me with hipaa podcast hosted by donna grendel and david sims the show created to help you with hipaa 
for more information or to ask us a question, visit our website at helpmewithhipaa.com. Neither Donna Grendel or David Sims are attorneys, and they do not offer binding legal advice concerning regulatory compliance. The information in this podcast should not be relied upon or construed as legal advice in any way. Consult your attorney for legal advice concerning compliance with HIPAA regulations.